Hey guys, this is going to be a quick video about Paul Slaughter's unlooping them. So this is unlooped right now. There's nothing hooked to the output. And it's drawing almost 20 milliamps at 13 volts. It doesn't even read on here. What it's at. This is the frequency being read from that bridge rectifier hook to one of those coils on the EC league legs. So I'm just going to, uh, so what, all I have to do to loop this, I, I, I see this a lot on the internet. People are saying you can't loop pulse motors because you, the, like you close the circuit, you need a one-to-one -one transformer or spark gap. You know, an isolation transformer. It's a little bullshit. All you have to do is know how to design your motor so it works. It doesn't, you don't need a transformer if you know what you're doing. I've been building these things for almost 30 years. This is the positive on the output, and that's the positive on the input. You can see right there, just have these hooked up with this clips. So I'm going to just connect that right there, there to there. But I'm going to put this right here. Actually, I'll put it up here first. can see the frequency. I don't know if I can prop this up somehow so it's a little easier to see all at the same time on there. I'll try to do that. There's the gauge. So I'm about to hook it up. See there's the frequency as it that increases the RPMs are going up. That's why that's going up. You see, here's the current draw, and you, you watch it as the speed increases, that'll drop down. That's because it's looped now. And I haven't tuned this at all. I'm just doing this for this video. I just grabbed this battery, set this up, never tuned anything. It's more tuned for 24 volts right now. If I was to sit here and tune, tune it properly, I can get this into the negative zone. And like right now, it's running at 15 milliamps or so. Once it speeds up, it'll settle down around 15 milliamps. And I think that's like 0.18 of a watt. That's less than a 20th of a watt or a quarter of a watt. It's 13 volts going in. Like once that settles down, it'll be at 15 milliamps or less. 13 times 0.015. So, we're at. 0.195 of a watt going in there. Now this has to be hooked, set to hertz. See, you see where, I can't remember, we're at 11 or something before we started. Before I hooked it up, right there. To the, all I did was took the positive of the output with this driver circuit and hooked it to the positive of the input. And it's looped now. It's sending the flyback right back to the drive coil, is what happens with this circuit. And like I said, with the right voltage going in and the right tuning, the right timing, the right magnet spacing, all that stuff comes into effect. It's easier to loop it. When you have an output battery because like not loop it i mean like to get your over unity 
effects when you have an, a, a separate battery because you can manipulate the output voltages like that without any losses. When you're putting it back into the input, you're stuck at 13 volts or whatever your input is. And using any sort of a transformer or anything with these small motors, there's too many losses in the system to be able to loop it to where it will run itself. You have to be able to tune it on the circuit with the frequency to be able to get it to do what you need to do. And like this amount of power to get that much power out is pretty incredible. There's a lot of wind coming off of there. The camera doesn't really show how fast it's going. Let's see, now I'll unhook this. You can see it slow down. And it'll almost stop. But it'll go right back to that 10 hertz range or less. Like this little battery will almost run this indefinitely just the way it's set right now at that small little draw of power that will run pretty much. And we'll see here, I can just do the math and tell you. Less than five watts per day. I can run this for a whole quarter of a year for over four months, almost five months. With the way it's running right now with this battery. You can see it keeps slowing down. And the current is going up, it's almost going to hit 20. So, that's a long enough video anyway. I just wanted to show that because there's a lot of people out there that think you can't loop pulse motors. It's just a misinformation. There's a couple of them that are saying almost every time they work with a pulse motor. And it, you know, it's just, it's probably setting a lot of people off in the wrong direction. There was no reason why you can't loop a pulse motor. That's just some people have some configurations that are really stupid. That don't like, you know. And most of them won't show you the voltage and the current at the same time. But they'll tell you it runs for days and days and days and days on end. But this is the real stuff right here. And it works. Thanks for watching guys. If you want more with these driver circuits and pulse motors, tune into Sam's channel. He comments a lot in my videos. That's the guy. Go check it out. He's got some really interesting videos, especially the ones that are coming up.